guys, how's it going? So right now we are sitting in front of the beautiful pond enjoying a nice fire. It's cool, it's overcast. We're expecting rain later on today and I am not sure that this pond has ever looked as good as it does right now, but it looked wildly different at the beginning of the day yesterday. Let me show you. Absolutely full, like loaded full of string algae. The whole thing had kind of a neon green quality to it. Algae stuck to every single surface. It almost looked like the fish could just sleep in this nice billowy bed of algae. I didn't even know that string algae would continue to grow through the winter months, but it does. So I'm learning a lot. And we did implement some things yesterday that will help combat the problem. Uh, in a way that it'll hopefully not get as bad as it did. So this pond was just installed last July. It's not even a year old yet. It's an aquascape ecosystem pond. And in order to create an ecosystem, it takes time. And they said it's a two year process of getting your balance right, kind of learning the whole process and, and knowing what to do, you know, in situations <laughs> like the one that arose for us. So it was something that I expected. I wasn't shocked to see it. I knew that we would be doing a clean out and that's what we did yesterday. So huge shout out to Green Source Landscaping. Chris, who is the owner of Green Source Landscaping, brought his crew over and we did an overhaul. They did a beautiful job. They let me get involved in the process, which was so, so fun. Um, I'm going to put all of their information down below. If you are local, they are uh, the aquascape contractor that have been helping us. They were involved in the whole build of this pond. Uh, in, in fact, they brought all the stones. They're responsible for all the stones that you see here, which is just amazing. So anyway just enjoy working with that crew so much but i want to walk you through the process it's really not that difficult of a process it just took some time and then i'll show you what it looks like now close up i mean it's incredible the difference so the first thing they did is they put a pump in the bottom of the pond right at the deepest part and they pumped some of the water into this great big tub and that is for the fish they wanted to have the water that the fish were used to in the tub with the fish once that was done we suited up i put on my chest waders and my big old long gloves they had uh, boots like waterproof boots and some hip waders and we got in there and hand harvested as much of the string algae as we could just to give ourselves a leg up and you know when it's floating around there in the water it's pretty easy to gather i mean i was sticking my arm in there and just kind of like twirling it around my arm like cotton candy almost and bringing my arm up and there'd be this huge big long piece of algae on it was almost a little bit satisfying I actually enjoy getting in the pond quite a lot because the buoyancy it's like so comfortable to work in water and my chest waders have uh, padded knees built in so i can crawl around on those rocks and it's like it, it's a kneeling pad built in i feel like maybe we should do that for our jeans or our pants when we're out working in the garden and it was a warm day it got to about 75 yesterday so being in the cool water was actually very pleasant and there were a bunch of us working on that step and we had buckets on the side uh, but we were filling up buckets and people were running buckets over and emptying bringing buckets back so we got that step done and as soon as the water lowered to a certain amount after you know they were pumping the water out and we were just watering the lawn over here with that water once it was to a low enough level we got the fish net out and just kind of gently, it took us a while because you gotta be real slow and gentle, almost just letting them swim into the net. And the fun part about that is that every fish is accounted for. So there are 11 koi, the hyphen banded shark, which I have not seen all winter. I wasn't even sure that that one had survived. They all came out and they all look healthy and they've all grown a ton. So that was exciting to see. They all went into the tub where they had a something that was kind of like circulating water, creating oxygen for the fish while we were doing our whole project. So that's where they hung out for the day. Once the fish were out and in their safe location for the day, we got to fire up the pressure washers. We had two going, one on either end of the pond. And this, this step was probably the most time consuming because there was such a buildup, but it was so incredibly satisfying. I tried to get some good close-ups, but when you're in the pond, kind of hard to move the camera around, but on the big stones especially, you could take that pressure washer and just move it in lines across the stone and it would just create a nice clean strip. Oh, I just loved that. The littler stones on the bottom were a little bit more difficult because you don't want to displace them and pressure washer. There's so much pressure that the little 
gravel and stones would just kind of displace a little bit, which you kind of expect. And we did fix that later on, but you still have to get the algae or a good portion of the algae off those. And Chris was telling me it doesn't need to be perfect because we're never going to get 100% of it. So just do, you know, the best you can on the stones. And, you know, once we get everything else in place, like the auto doser we had installed yesterday, and I'll go over that, as well as the ion gen, which was actually not in the water. So I don't think, and that's why the algae got as bad as it did. We had it running, uh, and the ion gen is something that emits little uh, particles, I think of um, copper and zinc, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which is a natural way to combat the string algae. It kills it. And when they inspected the ion gen to see what was going on, it had corroded a little bit, and it wasn't actually touching the water, so it wasn't doing anything which now it is, that's all been fixed. The most satisfying part for me to pressure wash was the waterfall. It was just so incredibly loaded with algae and it just, it just sticks. Like the long strings you can gather up, but the stuff that's actually sticking to the stone, there's no gathering that up and there's really no brushing it off either. It's the pressure washer basically or nothing. So to see that running free and clean today is just, glorious once pressure washing was done of course that creates a bunch of little you know chunks and things like that around the rocks so uh, we took hoses and rinsed down the rocks and rinsed the stones down to where everything was kind of at the bottom level and then Chris and I went through and kind of just hand-picked algae whatever we could find and, and grab onto that wasn't still stuck to little rocks or you know whatever we would gather up pieces of that and then at the same time we would uh, fluff the stones back out and make sure all the liner was covered and it, it looked good again. So while we were doing that, and I'm not sure how much of this I actually ca uh, captured, and we'll walk over there in a second, but the guys were digging another hole kind of toward this side of the pond to put in a skimmer basket, which we didn't have this last fall. So we did a lot of hand netting leaves. Now, um, the way the water flows in this, it goes from one side over to this side so that everything can kind of gather which now that we have a skimmer box, everything will go in that, kind of like a swing pool, and we can just open the lid and clean out the skimmer box so we don't have to do as much hand netting, which is great. So they were working on uh, digging that in and you know placing rocks around it. In fact, Chris and I went down to Ontario um, Rock and we picked up a few more boulders to put around the area, and he's coming back on Monday to do a little bit more finish work in that space. And once that's done, we're gonna mulch this area. So the guys were working on that, which was a decent sized hole. So they had their work cut out for them. They also installed an auto doser. And what this does, and I'm gonna show you the things, there's a maintenance and there's a clear product. But you put that product in the auto doser and in our size of pond, it'll be different depending on the size of pond you have, but the uh, it should last for about 63 days and it auto automatically releases what the pond needs in order to maintain a clear looking pond. That along with the ion gen working properly should help create more of a balance in this pond. There's even an app you can um, connect to the auto doser that will tell you like, hey, it's getting low, you need to reload it. Or you can just go check on it once a month, put a uh, reminder in your phone. I don't think I captured any of that process when they were putting the auto doser in. That's why I'll show you everything. I was just so caught up in the cleaning process and just enjoyed myself so much. Uh, during that that yet yeah, I kind of forgot to move the camera a couple times anyway while they were working on getting all of that stuff set and we were going to get stones and things like that um, we were filling the pond back up so the cleaning portion was done it was just elbow grease mainly you guys it wasn't like anything uh, you know I don't know super technical it was basically just getting in there and and getting it done but the pond was filling up while they were working on the other other things uh, and what they were doing uh, during this process is they had a timer set for like five or 10 minutes. And every five or 10 minutes, they would get just like a Home Depot five gallon bucket full of water that we were putting, fresh water, um, and putting it in with the fish and tempering the water that the fish were in because that had been sitting out a, in a 75, 74, 75 degree day and it had warmed up and we don't wanna shock the fish. So it's kinda of like when you temper eggs in the kitchen when you're baking. You add a little bit of the cold water in with the fish, swirl it around so it mixes in. Five minutes later, you do another bucket, swirl it around, mix it in until you come to similar temperatures. You know, the fish were in similar temperature as the fresh water in the pond. And at that point, we put the fish back in and that was really fun too. And I swear they were thankful for their clean home because uh, they were swimming around my legs and like rubbing on my legs and they were letting me touch them, which that's kind of a new thing. It's kind of like they were saying, thank you for a clean home. So now a closer look, but real quick, let's do the before again. And he 
here is the after. Can you even believe this is the same pond? I mean, it's gorgeous. It looks brand new. And the fish, you can see them all chilling right there, sort of in the center. Some of them are under the fish cave right there. We found new growth on the water lilies, at least in this tub right here. There is another, uh, like a, you know, one of those root pot things, the fabric pots. Anyway, there's one right there. I didn't see any new growth on that one yet, but you know, time will tell. It's still fairly cool out. Look at this, look at this pond and that waterfall. I am just absolutely amazed. And Chris even warned me. He said, now it looks clear right now before we turn the waterfall back on. So it looks pretty good right now, but there's, there's tubes, you know, that are connected to the pump that go up to the top of the waterfall and those collect junk too. So when we turn that stuff back on, it's probably gonna cloud up the water for a little while. There's probably some stuff in there and you might have to, you know, scrape it off the top of, or net it off the top of the water, but we fired it up, nothing. Like it was just squeaky clean. And I, I netted a couple of like mulch pieces that I think we drug in there. Uh, the kids got in and, and swam in the end as well. And um, so I, I did a little netting, but I'm just, I, I can't even believe it. So over here is our wetland filter. You couldn't even see that. Like you could see no stones in there. And you can see a little bit of green. Let me get closer. You can see a little bit of green still attached to the stones, but with the autodoser and the ion gen going right now and actually functioning properly, I think we're gonna take care of that pretty quick. And the fish do eat the algae as well. And they were feeding like right after we put them in here. So the fact that there's still a little bit in there is, is not a bad thing because the fish will like it. But when it gets to the point that it was at, I don't think that, I don't know how many fish it would take to eat that much algae. Anyway, in this wetland filter, which is actually quite deep, the water goes up through those and then it moves across these stones, which it's really good. Like that beneficial bacteria um, builds up on the surface of stones. So having that water movement this way is wonderful. Having water movement there is awesome. And then we've also got some jets. I think there's two of them in this spot. And the reason why they install those is so that water is constantly being pushed this way and it pushes all any junk that might come into the pond, like blow in. It never collects right here because the jets are pushing water up against the wall here. And then it, you know, banks off the wall and moves back toward the pond or the main part of the pond. And then the water comes back over here. The skimmer box can collect whatever junk comes over here. And then it goes back down into a pump and then it's, <laughs> It's taken all the way back over, you know, to the waterfall and to the other areas. So it just recirculates. And I just am thrilled with the results. So right over here is where the skimmer basket is. This stone had to be moved from this area. Uh, they just kind of tucked it up here. I dug up some of the sedum and moved the sedum around because that's where they were planted. But I think that boulder actually looks really good right there. And then we've got a lid. So Chris is gonna come back and do some fine, fine tuning right here. Uh, around the liner with some other stones but you can see right there what it looks like inside so we can just take that basket pop it right out and you know dump out anything that it collects which will be especially nice in the fall once our trees get some size over in this area i can i mean i know some people net their ponds like they put a giant net over their ponds during leaf fall so that they don't have the all the leaf collection collection collecting on the water. And then right here is the auto doser. So this wasn't here yesterday morning. You just lift the lid and you can see you put the container of whatever you're using in here. And then there's a little dial, which will be different depending on the size of pond you have. So ours is set to a 10. I think it goes up to maybe 30. If I'm wrong about that, we'll put it on the screen, but I think our pond is roughly 5,000 gallon pond. Um, and he has it set to a 10. And then there's a little place where you can adjust the dosing right here. I'm gonna have to do some strategic planting in this area <laughs> because it's kind of a menagerie. We'll uh, probably figure out how to bury some cords over here and then I'm gonna plant just some things that aren't, uh, it won't impede your ability to get to this stuff, but at least on this side to block it from the main view. But we also have like the control for the lights that are in the pond and a pond thermometer, water thermometer. This is the uh, ion gen right here. This is the one that you can either dial up or down depending on how much, hey, oh, how much algae you have. And again, that's the one that emits the little bits of like zinc and copper. And the little probe for that is down underneath the stones down here. It's like firmly in the water now. You know what, mister? You're full of it today. 
Let's take a little walk up here. Take a look at this waterfall. Oh, it looks so good. So good. And you know, the interesting part about it is that our water clarity was actually really good. It was very, very clear water. It was just the string algae. So I'm glad we weren't dealing with the cloudiness. That on top of the string algae and it would look like pea soup. And here are the couple of things that are used in the auto doser. I think this is what's being used currently. This one's called maintain for ponds. It reduces maintenance. And I'm reading on the back, it says staple water treatment for keeping ponds clean and healthy. Combines our most effective treatments, including beneficial bacteria, phosphate binder, dextoxifier, safe for fish and plants, that sort of thing. And then this one's called clear. And I think this one is for like cloudy situations. Phosphate binder to clear unsightly water conditions, including cloudy and discolored water. Again, safe for fish and plants. And all of these things are new to me. I'm just learning about them uh, because as you know, this is our first pond but I really wanted to have a pond that I wasn't using chemicals in because there are algicides. We could have done some kind of an algicide in there um, to take care of the algae quickly, but it's not taking care of the root of the problem. And I wanted to, like, that's the allure of the aquascape ecosystem. You know, it creates its own um, thing in there to where it balances itself. And hopefully in the long run, you're doing a lot less maintenance. But I am glad to one, have Chris who knows ponds, who knows how this stuff works, and who's somebody you can call when something, you know, you're just not sure what to do with something. And I'm also thankful that they warned me, like you will get string algae, it's going to be a process. Uh, you will get it dialed in, so don't worry, it will become something that will be a little to no maintenance to you in the end, in the long run. But the first little bit, you have to kind of get over that hump and kind of learn about it and kind of get everything dialed in before you reach that point. So. None of this was a real surprise <laughs> that it was gonna turn that green color. But let me tell you what, I enjoy it a heck of a lot more when it looks like this. Just walking over here for one more look. That fish right there was the first one out and the first one back in. You can see it's uh, the least shy. And while we were working on this, the crew was back there working on the kids' play set. We did have a camera out but I don't think there's much to show. I think they got the landscape fabric down, uh, but they did a lot of like ground assembly. They said today is the day where things will start to look like it's coming together. So they were back there working on that while we were up here working on this. And it was just a really fun, exciting day. And I'm also glad to have this project buttoned up because now I feel like I could come in here and start doing a little bit more planting. We can get the mulch done. Uh, and now I know what the cleanout process is like. And that's why I didn't do anything back here or I haven't yet. Um, because I didn't know what kind of space they were going to need during this process because I'm sure we'll do another big clean out like this again at some point. And now I know that it would be nice to have a sort of open area that is near the pond for the fish tub. Like if we need to take the fish out, we need a space to do that. And I suppose we could put it on the patio. Yeah, that would probably work. But see, I didn't know that <laughs> until now. So anyway, guys, that is what our day was like yesterday. I hope we captured it. Uh, in a way that it was easy to see sort of the process and uh, certainly night and day difference from yesterday morning to today. And we will definitely bring you along for any other things that we do in terms of maintenance with the pond this year, just kind of show you what, what we're dealing with because it's stuff that, you know, if you guys decide to put in a pond, you might be facing as well. And I'm hoping to do more plants too. I still do have that as a foxfire, the tropical water lily, so pretty and it still feels pretty firm it just doesn't look like much so i'm hoping that we can repot that and it'll grow but i would love to add some more plants into this area this year and really cultivate that really interested in it so anyway that is it for today you guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one bye